Can you hear me? be heard. It keeps pausing it. I'm trying to get an audio check here and it keeps pausing it on my video. Seems to think it was a past broadcast when I'm live right now. Okay. I, I can hear myself now. Turn the music down a little bit so that I'm n it's not too loud. I can see the chat. Let me know if it's too loud, but yeah, we got all of these custom sleeves, or rather not custom, but official sleeves for Oath, and it's gonna be a lot of work because there's like 200 of them, but figured I'd stream the process. Not gonna be talking a ton, but you know, have uh, the Cuphead soundtrack on, should be nice. Uh, I will put a message here in case somebody comes in later. But... No. If the music is too quiet, loud. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get into it. I'm actually going to start. I have the sleeves, but I'm gonna actually start by punching out the boards because I haven't gotten around to that yet, so they're pretty loose, so they're not gonna have that nice kind of snap that uh, punch boards sometimes do. have already fallen out of this one. You kind of just sw hang and swing. You don't actually snap them off.
coins. There we go. Not actually going to be using these coins mostly because I got the, the Kickstarter metal coins. Um, I recorded the unboxing for this already, so most of this will come up in that. But I have all the stuff set up. Bag those up. Okay, time to actually get into the sleeves. Um, yeah. So, I'm gonna try and not get them out of order because there's a lot of them and the way they're set up is like specific to the tutorial, which I'm gonna run through at least once. So, go with the one that I already opened first and foremost. These I'm pretty sure are all in order. So. Crack into it. Here we go. First one. 
out of uh, quite a few. So let's continue. Let me pull these in so you guys can see the lovely artwork. Whoops. That one is upside down. Enchantress. You guys ever seen a uh, Suicide Squad? I know, I thought it was pretty fun. No, it's a terrible movie. But it's one of those fun bad movies where it's still kind of entertaining. The designs of the characters are kind of cool. Nice if you could see any of the colors in the movie. Change the gonna change this to an ASMR, I think. one's in the middle, so it's like combining. Oh, I'll arrange those. Yeah, that looks cool. stuck together. Hold on. There we go. Thank you. 
I love this one. The goose is talking. News from afar. I, I love a lot of these cards, but like that one's so silly. I'll probably go through at the end of this and just kind of pull out some of my favorites. Because they're all numbered, thankfully, so I don't have to worry about mixing them up too much. couple well, hard to pick up off the table and of course the classic internet meme of Harold rowdy pub another favorite love that one I mean yeah I I figured it's like I I spent it all, and this is going to be a pretty involved process, so, like, why not stream all the sleeves? Uh, they are super nice. They, it is, like, very glossy, and it's got this cool frame that really, like, connects with the, the artwork on the back super well, and it's all just clear on the other side. That's the first packet finished. So, I'm going to move on. Can do the relics next? No, I'll save those, I think. Let's see. Um, I believe this is the packet after this one. This is the archive. Okay. So it's this one, then that one. Then packet B, I think. Am I missing one here? Let's see. That's 90. Hmm. Okay. And that's packet A, which is the sights. <laughs> AC sent. Yeah. I mean, it's not really ASMR. I have background music and everything, but, uh,. I know, yes, my, my artist is working on making the, the screen bigger there. I'm gonna really shrink my camera down and just like make a ton more space. So yeah, I've, I've been meaning to for quite a while, but with how that specific custom layout is, it's, it's tricky. All right, um, trying to keep these organized so I don't mess up the tutorial setup when I actually play the game. So... Let's see, I will put these in the box, and I'll toss some dividers around it. And let's do the next packet over here, I think. Yeah, whoop, uh-oh. The divider immediately fell over, hold on. Oh yeah, no, I, I love the colors in this box. And honestly, like, it's just surreal after playing, and I counted it up before I did my unboxing, which will go up sometime soon. Um, th I've played 32 games of this online, so getting to see it all physically in front of me, it's just bizarre. like looking at this art even just now, I'm like, that's, this doesn't feel real. It feels like, <laughs> um, it's hard to describe, but it feels like when you go to, like, a, a convention, like a fan convention, and someone has, like, printed a hardcover copy of a specific, like, fanfic, and just seeing, like, a visit, like, what? But my brain, it just, it, it's confusing, but it's awesome. <sighs> All right. So yeah, now we're going for, I believe this is the next pack. Yes, 145 through 198. Here we go. We're gonna switch this around so you guys can see the art. Or actually, yeah, there we go. 
Hold on a sec. I think I messed this up. I'm gonna tuck those two, put those there. Yeah, 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 and then this'll... Okay, okay, I got, I figured it out. I got, I got them out of order for a second. Yeah, keeping them in order for the tutorial. I mean, I can always, like, the tutorial is just the first 49 of them in order, so it's not like it's that hard, but I figured it'll just be a little easier overall if I keep them in order now and then decide if I want to shuffle them up. Everybody I play um, physical games with has not had a chance to play this yet, so I want to make sure that I have a, a decent way for them to learn. You know, that's fair. Uh, my group is pretty trusting of, of whatever method I use, since I'm the one who's really into tabletop games and they enjoy them, but like, not to the level I do. I'm, I'm one of those rare, rare unicorn gamers that actually likes reading rules, so. That definitely helps. Although not to the level season, like you, you know every rule this game. Dan, like I, I'm pretty sure you've directly like pulled out the specific like reference number. And with a game like this, that's that's super impressive. Kudos on that. I wish I was at that level. I just kind of vaguely remember how they connect, and uh, look it up when I can't remember. Almost done with this packet. Yeah, well, I have the rule book, like, I have the rule book PDF there, and I also have it on my iPad, but I just, like, when you're running a stream and you're, like, playing the game with everybody, it takes a minute to look things up. But yeah, I definitely appreciate when you're there in stream to uh, keep us on track. 196, 197, 198, there we go. Ooh. Oh, actually I should. in. In fact, let me make sure to do that for... Yeah, 
can already tell a lot of these are not fully in the packet. Okay, there we go. All right. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, I also appreciate that they even have it numbered out like that. That's really useful. All right. Packet B. Yeah. Wizard School, another favorite. It's always fun, especially in uh, any game that people are clawing for the... Um, Darkest Secret. And then, yeah, anybody who's wondering, this is why I'm keeping them in order, because you flip this over and it directly tells you what to do with the specific cards. So that is not going to get a sleeve, unfortunately, but, you know. Stop. 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 Okay. And then I actually need to open up the other pack of the Denison sleeves. So we're just gonna put this here. Okay. Continuing. Oh, those are upside down. There we go. Long bows. Yes, that is correct. Gambling Hall is my favorite card. It's just, it's so much fun. <laughs> really. Um, I don't know. It's just like, it's so much fun to hit that roll. And in a game where, aside from campaigns, there's not a ton of chance, adding that chance element like makes for huge swings and who's winning like you you might make a plan and it's like oh if i can just get this much from gambling hall i can like there's so many things i can do and sometimes you don't get it and it's like heartbreaking but it's hilarious and then other times you 
get even more than you expect, and you're like, well, actually, with that much, maybe I'll do this. It's, yeah, it's just so much fun. In general, like, th there's always a balance of strategy and luck. I see a lot of people who are like, oh, this game's pure strategy, which makes it great. And it's like, well, I mean, it means that it's, like, easier to predict and stuff, but those kind of games are imminently solvable. Whereas, it, you don't want it to be too much luck, because then it's like, well, what does it even matter? It may as well just be tossing coins. Roll into, like, Candyland is the obvious example where it's like, you could basically just shuffle the deck, deal it out, whoever gets the ice cream card wins. Like, you don't even need the board, you don't need to play. Meanwhile, on the opposite end, you have Go, which is a, a pure strategy game, and it's great. I do love Go, but it's also like, what, what... It's so hard to gain any kind of heuristics because it's so dense and incomprehensible what's even happening half the time. I'm gonna use this so I don't scuff up the handful of tutorial-specific cards. Okay. That's gonna go up front with another divider. Ooh, that's pretty tight. Hmm. Actually, I think that should go elsewhere. Hold on. Yes. Yeah, I like the idea of Dune, but it's like pure just gotcha. Like, who did, like you know exactly what's gonna happen. And depending on which faction you're playing, a lot of them, they just, they will already know because they can, you know, either like the Bene Gesserit, they can force you to do stuff that you don't want to do, which means that they're set up to win or, um, but just so much of it is like, what are you even gonna do? Is too solved. I mean, I guess, yeah. I, I've definitely played Root so many times, especially now that they have the app, that I'm like, I don't want to say bored of it, but I really can't wait for them to get the uh, the Underworld expansion in there. Although they did just put in the, the River Folk, and that added a lot. Um, I still have no idea how to play the, the River Folk company. I don't know what it is, but I just, I can't grasp what strategies to use with them. Especially because it's like, it's so easy to make strategies that don't require the River Folk Company at all, and most people are incentivized to never help them. Whoops. Oh. Oh, right, because it's the edifices. The, the, all of the edifices are double-sided. Oh, wait. How do I... No, that doesn't work. Hmm. Are there edifice-specific sleeves? No, I guess you just have to flip them around. But I guess you only have to do that, like, once a turn. 
or once a game. There we go. Okay. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, this is really throwing me off. Okay. Yeah, Forest Temple's okay. Uh, I think it'll get a lot more use from me now that... Um... I'm not playing the digital version. That and the the spire. Nobody ever does the spire digitally because it's just like doesn't do anything. Okay. Now zip. Oops. seems like a really good way to shake up a chronicle that's grown a little dry especially if the uh, the Empire has won a few games throwing in the spire would like give give the exiles a lot more chance to do something about it Forgotten Vault. I don't think I remember Forgotten Vault. Probably passed it by now. Mm -hmm. I also love the uh, deer on Salty Earth. Tamer. Wait, did I not? I must have just not noticed when we hit Gambling Hall. Huh. Well, I mean, it's in here somewhere. But there we go. That brings us up to 90. 91. And, uh, yeah, there's some duplicates, or I missed some. Could these be for the tutorial cards? Three, four, five, six, seven. Hold on. I don't think they are, but let me, let me check through. Also forgot to tamp these ones down.
Oh, wow, yeah, they did actually... Well, okay, there's spares, but I'm... I believe, yeah, there's just enough to put in the tutorial card, so may as well. And if I ever need more for whatever reason, you know, I can just pull them off these. Sorry, I have to do this kind of off camera, but I don't want to accidentally lose my break. Okay, fully sleeved on the uh, denizens. Now we're gonna do the sights and the relics. So let's do the relics first. These little guys. And unfortunately there's no tear strip on the relics. There's a hole on the face here. I don't wanna scratch up the art. Hold on. Gonna be very careful. Ah, okay, got a tear. Okay. And actually, let's yeah, flip those over. Favorite relic? That's a good question. I'm gonna have to pay attention as I look through them. Uh, I'm just gonna actually sleeve. Oh, oh whatever. I'm gonna sleeve the uh, tutorial card as I do it. Why not? Now that I know that they actually fit. Um, right. Grand Scepter doesn't work like that. It's also weird seeing the Grand Scepter as a uh, regular sized relic. the whistle more, but it's rarely enough. Obsidian Cage gets a lot of play, but I don't know if I specifically like it. Curse Cauldron. Pretty solid, and it is a Black Cauldron reference, so that's a pretty good one. Oh, you know what? In terms of gameplay, Bandit Crown. Bandit Crown is one that I always use a ton. It really changes the flow of whichever game I'm playing. There it is. Uh, in terms of artwork, I mean, I gotta go Oracular Pig. Wow, just happened to be seeing these. Circulative Command. It's okay, but because it only has the one die, it's pretty easy to contend with. Um, I guess, yeah, just the Black Cauldron references I really love. Wow. Give you a lot of extras on that. What is this? Nine? 
you got nine extra sleeves. Which is pretty cool. And that's used with the tutorial. Uh, cards in there. Okay. And now we just got the sights. Again, no tear strip on this. I would recommend watching Black Cauldron. It's, the, the thing to understand with it is that there was a lot of, not even just studio meddling, but specifically Jet Free Katzenberg meddling. It was like one of the first movies when he first came on and it just, he did not understand what he was doing. He was terrified that it wasn't gonna do well. And so he just, he just panicked and did so much to that movie that really wrecked it. To the point where like, later on he was so furious at them doing the movie the way they were doing it, that he like broke into the editing bay and just started cutting out footage. Just started cutting film. He had never even touched an editing bay before. He'd never animated. He had no idea what he was doing. He just started ripping stuff out of the film. And it like, it really suffered for it. But the parts that they kept in are really, really good. Really good. All of the characters are just so fantastically written and so interesting. I, I really, really love the movie, but yeah, it had so much more potential than it ended up having. It would have been a very dark, very brutal, like, movie, but they they were really looking to Disney as, like, super friendly kid stuff, which it doesn't need to be. And it wasn't until Pixar came around that they realized, like, oh, we could actually do stuff a little more, a little more brutal, but they chose not to, for the most part. Wow, a lot of tutorial cards in this one. actually need to steal some more sleeves from the tutorial ones. It feels like they might have taken up too many. Sight. Bam. Hidden place. Hidden places. I mean, I think the buried giant is my favorite sight. Specifically, but the hidden place I have an affinity for because it always changes whatever specific game it's in. We got two extra with that. So we had exactly enough with all the tutorial cards for the Denison cards. We had two extra on the sight cards, and we had nine extra on the relics, which is very interesting to me. Okay, now I gotta tuck this all back in the box. So let's see how that works out. Yeah, yeah, I had the box. Movie magic, box was right off to the side of the screen. How do I want to organize all this? Um, cardboard coins. Cardboard relics. The world box and the journal fit right next to each other. Probably put clockwork prints right there. Oath keeper and plaque. Tuck those under the journal, I think. Yeah, journal's a little flexible, so that's probably fine. 
these are actually going to go with the cards and such, so... Um, hmm. Figure that out. Figure that out in a bit. These are going to need to actually be moved a little bit. Because the uh, player boards don't fit in here like that. There we go. Yeah, those can be smooshed down. Player boards. The sights. Right there. Uh, oh, gotta have the banners. Ah, took the actual wooden bits. And, ah, shoot, I forgot about the reliquary. Well, I think that has to go with the uh, player boards anyways. All right, player boards slotted right in. I felt bad when I was filming my unboxing of this. I totally forgot the, uh, to show off this super cool insert, but oh well. Very giant with force paths in the cradle. Oof. Oh, that's that's very rough. Uh, oh, I don't know if there's any misprints on my meeples. I haven't looked through all of them. Let me, oop. Let me tuck that to the side. Let's actually go through all my meeples, see if there's any misprints. Oop, sorry, keep hitting it. We'll go. We will go in TTS order. So Chancellor, red, black, blue, yellow, white. Let's see here. So far looking good. Ooh. Oh, there's a little, uh, kind of a crack in this one in the corner. Yeah, that's a little bit, a little bit of like a, an imperfection in the wood. So that's not exactly a misprint, but it gives it a little bit of flavor. Hmm. Yep, just that one with the purple that has a little crack. Uh, oop. These two? Yeah. All the printing is good. So that is solid. Although the red, to my eye, is a lot more orange. Whoop, oh, there's a misprint right off the bat. Yeah, there's a little chunk, a little chunk of black missing on that one. And there's like a little bit of a raised bump. So I feel like it's probably just a raised bump on the wood that prevented it from getting that little bit in there. So there's one. Not a super fun misprint necessarily, but that's there. Those are all good. Wow, you can really see, really see the pen strokes on the red pawn. And black meeples. Let's see. Got the little flex and that crevasse. Okay. Uh, ooh. Uh, hmm. 
I think that might just be part of the graphic, but it looks like it's cut off on this side a little bit. It's hard to tell without one to compare it to. I mean, I finished sleeving, so it's fine. I figured I'd just check them real quick for funsies. It's only going to take another minute or so. I'm already halfway done. I figure I'd at least finish out the hour. on this one but nothing too egregious okay yeah I don't know I could probably check on like TPS since it lets you hit the the object zoom all right yellow which is my favorite you know I'm, I'm not too picky when it comes to my playthrough streams and stuff I'll choose whatever color nobody wants but um if I have a choice yellow for sure I, lo I love the robot man design and like especially with this, this is a very vibrant yellow and those are all good nice and even if there is a misprint like I appreciate it um yeah, I, I enjoy it. misprint. I, there's, I remember there was a picture of like somebody got a misprint where their, uh, it was one of the otters in their, their set was like of a river folk expansion Hat, was like printed on the back. Uh, I think one of my cats in my root base game is a, uh, misprinted. I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay, and then these all look fine unless there's something on the back. No, don't need to go through all of them. Red or white? Right is, white is definitely my, my second favorite. I love the little cloud guy. Um, red? Red is alright. I always see red as like the least picked, if just because like, it's not bad. It's just like, as far as all these interesting original fantasy characters go, it's one of the least uh, original, I suppose. All right, and then I need to really flan these out to make them fit in the box. is so huge. hole punch so come on yeah just want to get them all flat flattish blue certainly has a great meeple I always it threw me off because I saw the blue warband first so I thought it was like a guy like it was a face and then this little notch on the left was like a mouth so it was like a guy in in profile little murp, 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 mouth. I get now that it's supposed to be a group of people holding a war banner, but like, that really threw me off for the longest time. Ugh, and purple barely even fits in its bag. I 
think there's a bigger bag in here I could transfer them over to, but that's fine. It doesn't need to be perfectly flat. I'm trying to just get it as flat as possible so it'll sit in this dang bag. Or this, this box with all the extras and such. Then I will actually adjust a couple things in here. we go. I think that should just barely close. Oh man, I haven't had a problem like this since Vast. Vast was incredibly hard to get to close correctly. Um, specifically the Mysterious Manor. But uh, yeah. Here, I'll just tuck these all into one bag. I don't need to keep separate bags for each of them. This on top. These are all those bags. I'll hang on to that package because it has artwork, even though it is duplicate artwork, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I got, I, I specifically got Mysterious Manor because it's, it's just a more interesting theme to me. And then, um, Yeah, I, I was told, like, you don't need to get the other ones. The Mysterious Manor is much more streamlined, apparently, and just, like, overall a more solid design. So, including, plus, like, they're working on Modular Vast, which is going to just combine them, basically. And then I get the silica packet back in. Keep everything nice and dry. <sighs> ah, there we go. I mean, vast in general, I feel is kind of clunky. I mean, it, it's good, it's fine. It's not, I don't disenjoy it, but as far as everything goes, it, it's not quite as uh, cohesive as Oath and Root ended up being. All right, well, that's it. Sleeved up all, all the game, got tucked back in here as well as I can. I'm probably gonna adjust that as things go on. But thank you guys for watching. I will actually be around to play some Clockwork Prince at some point. Um, tomorrow, I have another thing that I'm gonna put together, <laughs> which I got at the Dollar General. Just I saw it and I like that that little guy from the, the movie. So I'm gonna gonna put that together. But yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye, goodbye everybody. Have a good weekend. Join tomorrow for that, that Lego. It'll be silly. It won't take very long. But yeah, goodbye. Goodbye.